But first, the Florida Democratic Party's Take Back Florida tour stops in Clay and Duval counties today. Here now with more on that are Daniel Henry, chair of the Duval Dems, in studio. And Nikki Freed, chair of the Florida Democratic Party, is on the line. Thank you both so much for being here this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Of course. And you, my friends, you can also join the conversation. Call us at 549-2937. Tweet us at FCC on air. Email us at firstcoastconnect at wjct.org. You can also message us on the First Coast Connect Facebook page. Now, Nikki, I I really appreciate you being here. You're obviously in the car doing a whole lot today. You're currently zigzagging across Florida for a month on this Take Back Florida tour. So on this massive road trip, what message are you trying to share with the constituents? You know, we're sharing a lot of messages. uh, But the the main one is that there are so many things that are happening in our state. Uh, Economic collapse. uh, We have an education system that is under attack but the only way that we're going to take back our state is to do the work. So we're crisscrossing the state going to areas that have been Democratic strongholds, but also areas that haven't seen Democratic Party in a while, giving new life and inspiration and momentum to our grassroots uh, communities all across our state, working on voter registration. Part of this tour is also announcing our $1 million commitment uh, to voter registration and getting everybody back on the vote-by-mail rolls. Um, and so this is an opportunity to, to not only lift up our, our grassroots organizations, reconnect with so many people across our state, and really give Democrats th- that hope and faith that we need in order to start competing again in our state. And what is so important about the timing to do this tour now? Well, and, and that's really important, that we're doing the work year-round. You know, for too long, you know, one of the biggest criticisms of the Florida Democratic Party is that we don't show up until election time. Meanwhile, Democrats all across the state, whether it's our school boards, uh, to our city and county commissions, to our state house and state senators and our members of Congress, do work all year round. And and we have to be communicating with our electorate. We need to be listening. And so we kicked off this tour a a year and a half before the November 24 election to start putting in the work, to be listening to to the voters on the ground, and to make sure that the message that Democrats deliver um, is, is resonating throughout the state. And and I love that you bring up that uh, so many voters, you know, they don't really think about elections until they're here and it's time to talk about them while representatives obviously are working year round. So what strategies are in place to encourage citizens, encourage potential voters to participate in local and state elections? You know, this is something that, you know, has plagued, you know, elected officials and people involved in politics for, for generations, you know, that, that most of the electorate doesn't pay attention until it is literally time to vote and it's in their face. But we're in a situation that is very different than in previous election cycles. And that's the extremism that came out of Tallahassee that has fundamentally shifted the way, uh, you know, the state interacts with one another. Um, And so right now you're seeing for the first time in a very long time that the policies coming out of Tallahassee are impacting people every single day. You know, right now, Florida is the highest inflation in the nation, but people are feeling it at food stores, they're feeling it at at convenience stores and the gas pumps, and um, they're seeing it every single day in Florida. They're also seeing the property insurance crisis. Whether or not you can even find property insurance, you've seen a 208% increase since Ron DeSantis became governor. You're seeing, you know, the lack of access to health care, the stories that are already coming out um, of the 15-week abortion ban, and soon, as soon as the Supreme Court decides on the 15-week, the six-week pops into place. So the everyday Floridians are facing serious issues, whether to pay their bills, whether to pay their mortgage or their rent, or potentially leave the state. And of course, we're seeing the highest teacher shortage in the nation here mm-hmm. in our state. Teachers unwilling to stay in the classrooms because it's become a war zone. They don't know what to teach, how to teach it, you know, AP history, AP uh, psychology in or out. Shakespeare is being under a- attack, not even being taught everywhere. You're seeing a- ridiculous policies coming out of school boards because they don't know how to, to move forward and-, and not be removed from office. You're seeing things like having to get permission to use nicknames. Like I'd have to have gotten permission to use Nikki um, at- when if I was still in school. These are real consequences that are happening every single day in Florida. And that's why people are paying attention now um, because of the impact these policies in Tallahassee are having on their lives. 
Yeah. And I, Daniel, I'd love to bring you in on, on some specifics here because Republican registration has been catching up and eclipsing Democratic registration for the past couple of years. And it kind of goes against historical trends and what we thought was going to happen as demographics skewed more racially diverse. So how are voter registration efforts going locally? Because voter turnout hasn't always been great. And we always worry about people not realizing they might have lapsed on updating the registration. Yeah. And I think when you have these local elections that we just had in Jacksonville, um, despite the roadblocks that the state legislature and the governor have put in front of people to be able to get people to register to vote, um, right now with a, pa- a law that just passed during the last legislative session, um, if you just do one mistake when you're registering someone, you, you may risk being charged with a third degree felony and wow. having a $50,000 fine assessed towards you for each infraction. Um, so uh, this state is making it prohibitively difficult for you to be able to register people. Um, but despite that, um, and despite the apathy that you were just talking about and everything that we're seeing on a day-to-day basis on television, um, people still have a remarkable ability to stay engaged, at least in the local level, to try to make a difference. We saw that with the election of Mayor Donna Deegan. Um, I was just at one of her community conversations that she had um, in District 11 on the south side last night. Packed room, um, standing room only. Um, she only spoke for about two minutes and then allowed two and a half hours of just straight questions from the audience. Um, and like Linky was talking about, if you give people the opportunity to just to have a voice in the process and to have elected officials and candidates that are truly interested in hearing from them, then you can try to stem the tide and actually bring back some true democracy to a little local and statewide level. And for anyone who was listening to our show yesterday, that access to local leaders is something that sometimes does feel kind of unique to Jacksonville. And this this opportunity for a two hour, mm-hmm. essentially, you know, question and answer panel with the mayor um, is definitely something that I think a lot a lot of us should take more advantage of. We have a question uh, from Twitter from Jags fan Brian. Why hasn't the Florida Democratic Party stood up against the unconstitutional attack on public education in Florida? And what are the plans to make sure Governor DeSantis doesn't spend the rest of his term ruining our children's education? I open that to Daniel or Nikki, if if you'd like to go on that. Um, First of all, thank you for asking the question. And we have. Um, We have ethics complaints that have been filed against the governor and his staff. Um, There are lawsuits happening all across the state on education. We are out there every single day. In fact, last week we had a press conference in Palm Beach County on the first day of their school, bringing a heightened awareness to our education system. You know, as a proud product of our public education system down in Miami-Dade County, my mother was also a teacher. Uh, This is personal to me. I have a niece and nephew that is in the Palm Beach County uh, public education system, and what they are doing is indoctrination. And if anybody is second guesses that, just watch any of the PragerU, which is not an accredited university. The curriculum is now going to be in our schools. Um, watch any of those videos. And if anybody doubts that the Republicans are trying to indoctrinate our children, um, then, then they aren't paying attention. So we are constantly bringing awareness and attention to the situation. Um, Manny Diaz, who was supposed to, who is the Commissioner of Education, was supposed to have a town hall down in Miami Dade with Senator. Uh, Chevron Jones, Chevron Jones, uh, talking about black history. Uh, Manny Diaz failed to show up. Um, And so we are going to continue to highlight uh, the deficiencies in the Governor DeSantis' administration. There's federal investigations right now in the Department of Education on um, a bid process in the panhandle. Um, We are bringing light to all of these corruption and unconstitutionality. Um, And there's also communication with the federal Department of Education as well asking for help and asking for assistance. So we are definitely not letting off um, our guard because we know that knowledge is power. And the biggest way to take power away from people is to take away the book, take away knowledge, and indoctrinate them with a right-wing uh, approach to American history. Uh, so we are going to continue to fight back, and which is why the Take Back Florida tour is so important because parents need to be speaking out um, against these policies that are going into their classrooms for their kids. And I I would add on top of that, if you um, were watching legislative session back in January and February and March, um, you would see proud, good servant Democrats that were serving in the House and the Senate, just like Senator Chevron Jones and Senator Tracy Davis and Representative um, Angie Nixon, just really foreshadowing everything that we're seeing right now. 
um, as school starts this week um, and essentially be gaslit by their by their colleagues in the in the legislature and say they're overreacting. It's never going to happen. Um, and for us to get to a point, like Nikki said, where you almost feel like they're indoctrinating people. I mean, the idea that you'd ever get to a place where we have to have school board members wear shirts here locally saying um, slavery was not a benefit to black people, that that even is a conversation right. worth having um, at all, um, is emblematic of the, the point that we have gotten to. And it sometimes it does feel like we're still... It, you just even bringing that up the Prager U videos. I mean, Prager U, the now that they're being you know used in the education system in Florida, I remember the first time it popped up on whatever internet search I was doing at the day and, and I saw a Prager U article and was like, oh, interesting. I've never heard of Prager U. And it almost got me. It's, it's, they're very sneaky about the way that, or they're very intentional about the way they present certain information. Reminds you of Veggie Tales. In, in, a, in a way, in yeah. a way, but not nearly as charming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but public education and all the, the the many issues that Floridians are facing at the moment, these are the kinds of things that you want, that you hope really energizes people to register to vote and then turn out to vote. So, Nikki, with you on this tour, how are you reaching out to voters who maybe feel like they are disenfranchised, they their vote doesn't count, as we always hear, or even uh, no party affiliation and to, to get them to come out? Well, that's also why this this tour is called Take Back Florida. That means all of us have a part in this. And and that the Democratic message isn't a Democratic-only message. The things that we just discussed, property insurance, affordability of our state, which is uh, a main issue that we're going to be talking about when we're in Jacksonville and and Clay today, is about the affordability of our state. When you're talking about affordability, you're talking about, you know, an educational environment that you know, teaches history, making sure people have access to health care and women have access to reproductive health care. Those are not democratic issues only. Those are democratic issues. Those are independent issues. Those are even issues from, from moderate Republicans who understand that government overreach is never a good idea. And the same thing of removing of, of duly elected state attorneys and school board members is not democracy. And so those are not democratic issues. And so when we're going to communities, whether, again, they're democratic strongholds and, and they need to see more democratic involvement or they happen to be areas like Clay, um, we're having these conversations so that we can listen. We can say, look, we are a big tent. Um, we have a very large opportunity to, to right some wrongs. Democrats haven't been in control of our state in almost 30 years. Um, and it's, it's time to let democracy back into our state. You know, even, even my dad is a diehard Republican, diehard Republican. Um, and so when I had to tell him that I became chair of the Democratic Party, uh, it was like walking down that, that hallway when you're a kid, knowing that you're about to get grounded. Um, but even to him, I said, Dad, you know, the only way that democracy works is when you have two strong parties. Right now, we have neither. We have an extremism from, from the right and, unfortunately, a Democratic Party that hasn't been able to compete in the last few election cycles. So it's important that we're talking about issues that really transcend partisan politics, talk about decency and humanity and, and really protecting democracy and freedom and liberties. Those aren't Democratic, Republican, independent issues. Those are American issues. And that's the conversations that we're having with the people everywhere in our state. You're listening to First Coast Connect on WJCT News 89.9. We're talking to Nikki Freed and Daniel Henry about the Taking Back Florida tour and the voter registration efforts going on at the moment, and we'd love for you to join the conversation. Call us up at 549-2937. Tweet us at FCC on air. You can also leave a comment on our First Coast Connect Facebook page. And it it looks like Javon from Tampa uh, is calling in and wanted to talk about Democratic campaigns. Javon, please keep it on topic and keep it short. Yes, I uh, worked in politics in Jacksonville, Alvin Brown campaign, other state and local campaigns. And um, I just want to say that this is work. And until the Democratic Party gets serious about paying people to do that work, it's never going to make any advancement. I have been in those offices, the campaign offices, win or lose, blood, sweat, and tears goes in, and the volunteers are amazing. And Whatever happens, the office is shut down, and nothing happens after that until it's almost time for an election again. We have got to hire staff and pay professionals who can be there and continue this work. 
because that is the only way we will get change is to be consistent and to stop wasting money on TV where it just all the dollars just go up in the smoke. Great. Thank you so much, Javon. Thank you for your call. Daniel, and, and I, I agree with... Oh, go ahead, Nikki. Oh, sorry. No, I, I say I agree, um, which is why we're starting this tour a year and a half a, a, ahead of time, um, because we agree that we need to be doing year-round organizing, year-round campaigning. Um, I'm even having conversations with all of the statewide elected, you know, whether it's school board, house, Senate, city, county commission seats, and everything in between, asking them to make sure that they don't shut down their campaigns, that they get back into the field now. And you're absolutely right, you know, as far as TV is concerned, that money will go so much further if it was put on the ground into field, to organizing, and talking to the communities um, that sometimes don't watch traditional TV. You've got to make sure that you're going to where the people are. That's the only way that you're going to win elections um, is to build that faith, build that trust, and it's about a year-round boots on the ground. And Daniel, I'd love to talk about this through the local lens because we kind of saw this with Mayor Deegan's campaign. She didn't spend a, a ton of money on TV ads. Her and her campaign, everyone working for her, they were in the communities. And it seems like it really made a huge difference compared to how campaigns were traditionally run. No, huge difference. If And, and anyone that knows me that's uh, had a long-form conversation about how to run a campaign will tell you that I love field. Um, it's my bread and butter. It's why I think that... Um, True races are decided. Um, and I think between Donna's campaign, all of our amazing candidates that won for property appraiser and for city council, as well as the local party, um, we spent a tremendous amount of time knocking on people's doors for the last two years to really get them engaged about this local election. Um, and I think the margin that she was able to win by, the hard work that her campaign kind of put in to really talk to people on a consistent basis is emblematic of that process. Um, I will say, though, that process is done through paid people, but also through volunteers. Um, when you can get people to buy into your campaign and really want to engage, not just write a check or donate on Act Blue, that's great, and we appreciate the donations, but also having people that are stakeholders like all of us that um, really want to make a change in our community. Um, I think Donna said last night that if you really want to have true change, you have to really get involved. Um, and that involvement makes a tremendous difference uh, when you're at someone's door and you're trying to convince them why a local election is important for you to vote for. And working on a campaign is a 24-7 job. I've had a <laughs> couple of friends who have worked on various campaigns and the on-call nature of that is is pretty intense. But being out in the community and specifically talking to people, especially those who might not always have a representative come and even ask what issues they're having in their neighborhoods, while you're going through and trying to encourage people to register to vote, update the registration, whatever it is, how are the Duval Dems going out and talking to the black community, the Hispanic community, also the black Hispanics, because Afro-Latinos exist also? They very much do. Um, I think it's, it's, it's kind of two-pronged. Um, when you're doing voter registration, it's really important for you to kind of meet people where they are. Um, I think it's a lot of times it's really easy if you just like set up a table somewhere. But um, being able to go into communities where you know there's a highly transient community, where you know um, that there's a large percentage of people that are unregistered. Um, but not only kind of just going to their door and just saying, hey, is someone registered in the home? But actually talking about issues that may be important to them. Um, it's a conversation. There's a reason why they're unregistered in the first place. Um, so you have to go to their door with a purpose. Um, you have to um, provide an opportunity for them to understand um, why elections and why being involved in the local process is important. Um, and then trying to transition to that conversation about registering to vote, voting by mail, um, and really getting engaged. Um, you have to have the commitment and the investment to be able to do that. Um, with this new program that the Florida Democratic Party is doing, it gives us an opportunity for us to be able to do that year round. Um, and it's a real chance for us to kind of continue that momentum going into the 24 election. What con what's the most common reason you hear from people to say why they're not registered to vote? Why it doesn't feel important to them? What's the difference? I'm, there's, there, I mean, there, no, I no, like that, there's always that's, a... That's what they say. What's the difference? What's the difference? That's what they say? Yeah, really? like, what, what's the point? Uh, every politician's the same. They never deliver on everything that they're going to do. Um, and I get that. Uh, I think a lot of times we've kind of gotten to a place of politics where you have candidates that kind of go out there, promise the world, and then under-deliver. Um, and people see that. Uh, but getting to a point where you talk about the little things that really matter, saying that if you elect this council person 
they'll be able to fix that drainage ditch that you have or the flooding that you mm-hmm. consistently see on a rainy day. Like Riverside sees that literally every single day when it rains. Eh, so does um, Springfield. So yeah. Exactly. So relating to people on a local level of how their lives will be directly affected just by the mundane things that they just never pay attention to or they see as a consistent issue but no one tries to fix, that's where you can make the real difference. It's easy to think about presidential politics and what's going on on a national level because that's what we see every single day. But bringing it local, showing what your city government can do for you and how you can make that change just on a minute level that will make your life a little bit better, that's where the difference is made and that's how you can make that change. We have a a call from Charles from the West Side. Charles, please keep it short and keep it on topic. Charles, are you there? Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for calling. I was very concerned in the last uh, uh, cycle how many defections we had from the uh, Latin community uh, to the Republican side. What specific efforts are is the party doing to get into the community and uh, engage with the community? Because it's not a monolith. We've got to recapture that share of uh of people that we lost in the last election. So, uh, you know, how are we targeted? Did we learn, basically, from our mistakes is what I'm asking. Great. Thank you so much, Charles. I appreciate your call. Yeah, of course we've learned from our mistakes. Um, And it's things that I have, you know, as our past commissioner of agriculture and engaged in not only 2020 and 2022 elections, things that I, you know, raised my my hands and was waving hands and, and flags that we've got a problem down here. Um, and unfortunately, both the national and the party apparatus didn't properly address the issues. Um, so since I became chair, we've been doing a, a tremendous amount. First of all, I've got a new appointed vice chair uh, who's solely responsible for uh, Hispanic outreach and engagement uh, and coming up with a plan. We're putting together a Latin American advisory council, an Hispanic advisory council, pulling leaders in from all across the state. Uh, we are also spending a considerable more time and attention deliberately um, on uh, Hispanic-owned different media markets, whether it's print, TV, radio. Uh, we have also dedicated additional funds solely to the Hispanic community outreach engagement. Uh, we are going back into a lot of Hispanic communities that we haven't been, including last week. I was in uh, West Kendall in Miami-Dade uh, talking to that segment, of which is also where I was born in that community. Uh, and so we're also, last week, we started, or two weeks ago, excuse me, we started our Spanish-only uh, media channels and on all of our media networks. Um, and we are also, a lot of our press releases, uh, most of them, press releases, social media content is in both English and in Spanish, and when the opportunity arises, also in Creole, uh, and making sure that our messaging is on point. Uh, so we are spending time training candidates on how to message because it is not monolithic. Uh, growing up in Miami, I know that firsthand. You know, whether, you know, those, those who came and fled communist Cuba in the 60s versus those that came later in, in the 80s um, versus those that have come more recently after Hurricane Maria uh, from the Puerto Rican community are very different. Um, so there is there is not monolithic, and making sure that we are on point on messaging and getting into those communities now. Um, and the other big thing is that they are also um, we're opening their eyes to the uh, fascism and authoritarianism that is coming from Ron DeSantis and the Republican Party. The government overreach, whether it is in healthcare decisions or the anti-immigration law, uh, or removing elected officials of opposition parties from the office. Those are all things that are get, helping us to message better on what Democrats stand for and who the Republicans are today. Yeah, that's I, I fully, fully resonate with the fact that Latinos are absolutely not a monolith. And I appreciate you saying that, you know, different different Latinos from different countries absolutely communicate differently because that is an incredibly true. And um, it really makes a difference in how how it is going into those communities and knowing how to talk to them differently. Across the board. That's with anything. Uh, we have a question from uh, Brenda from the North Side. She, Daniel, she wants to know how she can get connected locally. Great question. I love that, Brenda. Um, so if you go to DuvalDims.org uh, and click on the Take Action button, that is the first way you'll be able to find out how you can get involved. So highly encourage you to go onto our website and get our information. And so 
people are registering uh, by mail and voting by mail so much more these days. For people who are already registered to vote, and especially by mail, what do they need to know before going into next year's round of elections? Sure, there's going to be three elections next year. Um, sorry, I heard you, Nikki, here <laughs> to say something. Um, go, go, go. go. <laughs> there's going to be three elections this year, the March uh, presidential preference, the August primary, and the November election. That's the big daddy of all elections because that's when the president's on the ballot. Of course. Um, we're going to have some important school board races that are going to be a ballot in August um, here locally. Um, depending on how a redistricting lawsuit case goes, there's going to be seven candidates that are running for city council uh, for school board. They have to pay attention to, so a lot's going on. Great, thank you so much, Daniel Henry, head of the Duval Dems, Nikki Freed, head of the Florida Democratic Party. We appreciate you taking your time this morning to talk with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 